Got them out of books. I probably did get them out of a book. Praise God. But I didn't get them out of books I bought downtown. And there are certain patterns in life. And if you fall into those patterns and categories, you're going to have a rich life on earth. And there are other patterns. And if you fall into them, your life is going to be quite a bit like Brother Carter was talking about. Well, you filled with sickness and divorce and confusion and bereavement and... Just about all the whales of life. Amen. Praise God. Had good use service last night, and now we're in different kind now. Praise God. And <clears throat> so in Matthew the seventh chapter, verse twenty-four. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, we have a lot of hearers that he says and do it. A lot of folks sit out there and nod their head, yes, while well, I'm preaching. They never do hear. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. The house that was on the rock, the rain and the flood, and the winds blew, and they beat on that house that's on the rock. A lot of folks said, if I'm living for God, why is all this happening? Praise God. And I said, and the beat on that house, beat on it, but it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. Praise God. I want to minister to you tonight, winds to beat on the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray tonight. Jesus, I'm going to ask Brother Nathan Kerr to get Job 33 and 9, and hold it, be ready when I call for it. I'm going to ask that Brother Grubbs have Job 22 and 5 and be ready for it when I call for it. Brother Smith to have Job 18 and 8 when I call it. It's J-O-E-O. Somebody call it Job. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Brother Character get Job 20 and 11 and be ready when I call for it. And uh, Brother Tracy get Job 2 and 9 and be ready for it. And he said that those that heard his word and did it. Did. I've noticed, uh, I appreciate the young man's preaching last night when he got on his pastor and how he got strong about being behind the pastor and doing what the pastor said. And I think that some folks in here got a dumb idea that's kind of like being a brown noser, you know, or, or a preacher's pet or something like that. But that's because you're carnal and not spiritual. It is not Carl Elder that you get behind like that. It is the office that God anointed and appointed and put in the church. Praise God. And if you don't respect and honor that office, and you are in trouble with Almighty God. Not with me, but in trouble with Almighty God. Praise God. I thought of some people that, that uh, kind of made me look like a fool. I was thinking about it in Charlotte. I signed a man in Keitlinger's Lumber Company a couple years ago made a real fool out of me in front of everybody. Two weeks later, he died with a stroke. And <clears throat> I remembered a young man sitting about where Mother Kirker is one Sunday morning that got up and tried to make a fool out of me in front of everybody. And two or three months later, he was dead with a car ran over kill. And uh, <clears throat> it's not because I am who I am, but it's because I feel the office that God appointed in this place. The office that I hold is what you respect. So Saul was a sorry creature, disobeying God in every way, getting Israel in trouble each week more and more. God, David wouldn't dare touch him because he was anointed to that office. Praise God. And David waited some 20 years to fulfill an office that had been given to him 20 years before. Praise God. And yet, you don't have to worry, but because David waited on God, he is Israel's king today. And when they talk of a king, they talk about King David. When they fly a flag, it's David's star. It flies over their country. Praise God. And uh, it's David that country looks. And when you talk about the tomb of David, it's a safe place in Israel. Praise God. You you won't walk into the tomb of David and have a They'll put you out on a tour bus and let you sit there like some dunce. Or something. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, <clears throat> so it's that office tonight. And if somehow or another you could understand Stand when God is ministering through the pulpit that there is two ways that the word of God comes to you. One is by the written word which you have in your hand if you're holding the Bible and the other is the spoken word which comes across the pulpit. Praise God. And <clears throat> this Bible said that the wise man whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. I see lots of folks in the church today. They're perplexed, confused, and in trouble for two or three reasons. They don't hear. They don't do when they hear. They look at the pulpit as though it's a man talking to them and they have no idea that God's talking to them and yet the same man probably preached them into an altar of repentance and the plan of salvation brought them to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 
And when I turn to the book of Corinthians, I find the writer of over half of the paper. New Testament says, how can you be saved without a preacher? In the book of Romans, praise God. And uh, so therefore, I'm made to know that no man, not even a preacher, can be saved without a preacher. Preachers have to be preached to. Praise God. Praise God. But he said that it is he that doeth this that is saved. It's uh, this man that doeth what he hears from God, that when when these winds come, they can't destroy him. They can't tear his house up. Uh, I'm uh, amazed at these tornadoes lately. Now, folks, I've seen tornadoes since I was little. And I can remember when I was little of tornadoes cutting houses into, killing hogs and jerking farms into, and pulling trees out, crashing into a school down in Sullivan, hurting some children. I remember the adults talking about that when I was a kid. But I don't mind telling you some tornadoes I've seen recently are are some storms beyond my imagination. I am a built and I understand built. I can tell you what's in this building. The thing that's in this building is not what you think it is that is so important. Things that are more important in this building than anything is the steel that is tied into the concrete in this basin. Off of those steel comes large bolts that are bolted to the plates that holds the walls of this structure that holds these scissor trusses over your head. These are the more important parts of this building. The way these these rafters are fastened on to these walls are more important than all of the pretty pews of carpet plaster you see. Praise God. Praise God. The things that you don't see nor never think of are the most important part of this building. And so it is in your life tonight. The things that you pay no attention to nor see are more important than all of the finery of looking in the mirror and seeing how gorgeous you are and how wonderful you can sing. And singers today are not worth listening to most most of them, most of them are singing because they can do wonderful things with their voices. They can do nearly anything with their voice except worship God with all their heart and all their soul and all their strength and all their might. I can do a lot of things with my voice too. I can sing if I want to. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you something I'd rather do than anything is live for God. And I'd rather understand what's happening in my life. Praise God. There are several kinds of winds that come to us in life's time. Winds come to us from every direction. I uh, watched these tornadoes recently and it's amazing how they get a whip and wind changes just in a few minutes. You can get yourself steadied up one direction it's hitting you from another direction. And by the time you get steadied up that way you're getting hit from another way. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm turning tonight to the book of Psalms the 48th chapter and <clears throat> David begins to tell us some things out of this chapter about some wind. Praise God. Psalms 48. It's a beautiful chapter when you read it. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in the mountain of something folks hate today and in the mountain of holiness. Folk don't mind living for God today. Don't mind being baptized in Jesus name. Don't mind talking in tongues and they don't want none of that holiness stuff. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you something. You don't have holiness. You ain't going nowhere because our God is holy and he built a holy city and only the holy is going to walk therein. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, you may be young and strong and want to show off your uh, muscles. Get like me, you can show them off without any trouble. Praise God. In fact, you'll be glad when you can't. Hallelujah. And ladies, since I hit a little holiness thing, I noticed four different blouses in here last night. You can see brassiers through. And I don't think so some of you women are wearing these things to church because you're trying to show off your undergarments because I've almost been sucked into that once or twice myself because they're making some very pretty blouses that are very thin. I don't care how pretty they are, they don't belong in the house of God. And you're going to see them in camp. And I'm sad to tell you this, you're going to see them on preacher's wives because some of these preacher's wives would rather be pretty than holy. Praise God. But he said here, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. Now, many of these verses tonight I could preach on. I just got to keep on keeping on. But I, I'd love to preach on the refuge of his palaces. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. For lo, the kings were assembled and they passed by together. There is something 
something amazing how that God lets people find the truth. And there's a lot of folk that don't think that some folks has ever heard the truth. But I've come to realization that as I get older, many, many people, God brought them in contact with the truth. Sometimes as much as four times in life. And they pass by this wonderful place. And they was amazed about it. And they were shocked and astonished about it. And they were embarrassed about it. And there's a lot of folk that don't get in it because they're embarrassment. Because if they got in this, they might have to get rid of some friends. They might lose a stature in society. Praise God. And I won't tell you, you hang on to your little stature here on earth while I take my throne in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And he went on to say, Here then they saw it, and so they marveled, and they were troubled, and they hastened away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. Praise God. The east wind is a type of chastisement, is a type of the Lord chastising. Hallelujah. In Ezekiel, the 27th chapter and the 27th verse, and of course the whole chapter of 27 of Ezekiel is about Satan and what he has begot him here on earth. Hallelujah. But he goes on to say thy riches and thy fares. Some of you would like to know what the fares belong to. They belong to the devil. Thy merchandise and thy mariners and thy pilots and thy caulkers and occupiers of merchandise and all thy men of war that are in thee and all thy company which is in the midst of thee shall fall in the midst of the seas in the day of thy room. Verse 26, thy rowers have brought thee into great water and the east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. We don't come tonight to the understanding that the seas, that any time God speaks of the seas, any time that God speaks of the floods, he's talking of the masses of people. When you look upon the earth and you see the people as God sees them in the bobbing of their head and the moving of their bodies, they move like the waters of a great sea. And God calls them the seas. Praise God. And he calls them the flood that is swelling upon all of the unoccupied dry places of the earth. Praise God. And here you see that, uh, uh, that, that these wise men come, but when God gets ready. When God gets ready and looks down at these people, he sends an east wind at them. There's an old saying among older folks, the east wind is like a beast. The east, there's no meaner wind than the east wind. There is no wind that'll bring a storm like the east wind. And so it is that God sends the east wind and breaks man to pieces in his lifetime. And Many of us was feeling the effects of the east wind when we came to the Lord. Praise God. None other than the chastising of God upon this world. Let me tell you something. You're going to be judged here and you're going to be judged there. Praise God. I'd hate to be the man that's so deep in sin tonight because at the end of life's road is a miserable, miserable trip and also a, is a such, such sad situation as to going out of here in such a miserable fashion to know only thing left that as soon as I get out of here, I'm on my way to a living burning hell and there's nothing left for me but a miserable place even after I'm out of this place. Praise God and David said great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and in the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness you know what makes him so holy is? It's because sin ain't escaping. Some folk think sin's getting by but sin ain't getting by. God sees that down here every man hallelujah and he hears every word 
And they ain't one sin escaping nothing out of the eyes of God. Say, so, well, God, uh, if God hears God, I'm going to tell you before it's over with, you're going to see God. He's going to send the east wind upon that house. And it's going to beat on that house. And we're going to find out if that house is built on a rock or not. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And so great is the Lord. <laughs> you see, the king had to live a long time before he found out what life was all about. But when he finally seen what life was all about, he said, great is the Lord. And he's greatly to be praised. Praise God. Uh, and the mountain of God is a holy mountain. It's a mountain of holiness. And if you're ever going to make it through this world, it's going to be because you love holiness. And holiness don't offend you. Praise God. Uh, holiness does offend some people. It even has a difference of whether they come to church or not. Praise God. Got a tip throw to the tulips, but lately I've been kind of smashing some tulips. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm telling you something. I don't miss no television. Praise God. We was working over at Commerce Gardens today. I thought Brother Roger and Sister Kayleen be here. I didn't see them going nowhere. And I seen, we seen two televisions sitting on a trash can. And I told Brother Garris, I'd like to get a picture of that. I'd like to, I'd like to blow that up and put it in the newspaper and say, this is where they all belong at. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. All of them belong in the trash can. Praise God. Amen. I'll have time for that trash in me. Glory to God. David said, I'll sit no wicked thing before my eyes. Hallelujah. And television is as wicked as it can get. Man, sinners talk on the street about television like it's the most horriblest thing that was ever created. Hey, man, I won't tell you when rotten sinners talk about something like that. It's too, de it's too, it's too, uh, uh, what I want to say, too uh, uh, mean, too ugly, too sinful, too, what any one kind of word you want to put is for holiness minded people. Praise God for people who want to be holy, for people who want to think holy. For people who want to live holy, for people who want to believe holy, and that's hallelujah. Praise God. I, I, I'm a little bit leery of the radio a lot of times. I'd be driving along in my truck and I say, boom, and I push that thing off. Hallelujah. I say, that stuff's too sorry to listen to. Praise God. Amen. Woo. Fact is, the news anymore is just about too sorry to listen to. Boy, I don't mind telling you I love the mountain of holiness. <laughs> I love it so much I'm looking forward to the moment he comes and gets me and carries me off to that mountain. And I never have to look in this hell hole again. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And I'm telling you something tonight. If the east wind's blowing in your life, it's only because God loves you. He's trying to blow some junk out of your life. David said, he said this, he said, great is God, holy is God, mighty is God, powerful is God. And, and a lot of you don't understand even what that seventh verse means. It says all these fellas that just don't think you got to be holy and all these fellas that just don't, th all these fellas that just think all you got to do is wear, uh, you know, fancy rich clothing. You're looking at a man that likes to dress nice. I come from the east and where I come from, they dress nice. They don't dress like they do out here. These women out here look like, uh, anyhow they do. Uh. My first six months in Salon, I said, this got to be the ugliest bunch of women God ever created. Praise God. Where I come from, women dress up nice and like to look pretty. They do on the West Coast, too. Praise God. They do in Michigan, too. Praise God. And they do in Ohio. I'm not sure about Kentucky. Praise God. In Kentucky, you better watch that long tom gun. Praise God. They, they shoot down there first and talk late. Praise God. Amen. But I'm telling you, I like to dress nice. And you know, I suppose if I wanted to, I could, I could wear classy shoes anybody in the district. Oh yeah, I could stick my money in my shoes instead of a boat or a gun or something. I could wear seven, eight hundred dollar tailored suits. I don't know what you tailor them to, but anyhow. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when I walk around the general conference, you know, people be glad to shake my hand because they take one look at my clothes and tell, you know, drive a Lincoln, wear clothes like that. I want to preach for him. Praise God. They don't want to come here and preach because they got a burden for souls. They want to come here and preach because, hello, Praise God. But do you know what David is saying here in that seventh verse? Run, you 
in the midst of your journey, God's going to send the east wind and break your ship up right in the middle of the sea. I don't ever worry about things getting messed up when I'm in a boat, when I'm close to land. Boy, I'm telling you, when you're a mile from anywhere out there in that water, that's a long ways to swim. And you could be shriveled up worse than a prune time you floated in. Praise God. And God said right here in this book, I'll break you up right in the middle of the sea. Woo. Sometime in your life, the east wind coming and going to beat on your house and going to see what your house is made out of. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Exodus 10 chapter and the 17th verse, I like this praise God because God is always doing wonderful things. Hallelujah. Sometimes he comes and chastises us and break up our ship right in the middle of the sea when there ain't nothing left for us to do except do like Peter when he's out there in the middle and say, Oh Lord, save me lest I perish. Praise God. Amen. And that's the way I like for it to be. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Lord, save me because I can't save myself. Hallelujah. My money won't save me and my car won't save me. And my wife and my kids won't save me. And there ain't no preacher friend going to save me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't have anything left, Lord, but to put my trust in you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, Lord. Praise God. And when I cry out to him, woo, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, it said that old Pharaoh had some problems, and he wouldn't listen to God, and he wouldn't listen to Moses. And in Exodus, the 10th chapter, and the 17th verse, Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God. Listen to verse 16. Old Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Boy, I'll tell you what. If you ever figure out where you're at, it's these folks who run around all the time saying, I ain't done nothing wrong that's getting in deeper and deeper and deeper. Hello. I ain't never done nothing wrong. I know a man today that's not saved. Uh, he, he'll go to a UPC church. You'll see him in the UPC church. He'll be out there. He'll clap his hands. And he'll get a little excited. He'll raise his hands and pray. Uh, he'll do a lot of things when he's inside the church, but he's not saved. Uh, he comes as though he is saved. He's been baptized in Jesus' name, but he's not saved. And uh, his his marriage uh, of about 30-some years is just about to break into peace. Pieces. is just about to blow all to pieces and and uh, his children don't uh, they don't have much uh, respect for him they don't have they, w they wouldn't really waste a lot of money to go see him. and this man ever since I known him his little favorite phrases and in most folks think that he is teasing or kidding but his little favorite phrase is man what can you do for a man that's perfect praise God and his whole life is soon to become a total wreck. Won't be long, terrible disease. It's all it's already been creeping in on him bad in the last three or four years. Disease has been working on him. He no longer can do heavy work and bend over because of such severe back problems. Amen. I'm telling you, this is the way. And little by little, uh, you know, uh, folk think that uh, you don't live for God. Maybe a raven fire just come in, consume the house. Uh-uh, honey. Most houses fall because of Father Time. Amen. Praise God. They're not burnt out and they're not pushed down, but it's because of the wind. Amen. It's because of the, uh, the of just the elements of time. Praise God. Amen. And uh, little by little, the uh, uh, the termite was eaten in a place you didn't know and, and made the building structure weak. And, and little by little, uh, the, the 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 mice and the rats chewed something in too that that you didn't know uh, uh, was really it was hidden somewhere and you didn't see it happen and uh, and inside of there uh, there's other things that are working away inside uh, into life's time uh, you heard some funny things and wondered what else was in the house with you but you never was too interested to look into the situation and find out what it was and so you just let it pass on by 
But one day, Father Time caught up. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, the man that repents gets a fresh new start. Hallelujah. The man that falls down and cries out to God and repents. The Bible said that God loved them that are of a broken and of a contrite spirit and said that the Lord save us such. The Lord save. Hey, Satan, you've got something for him. But because he cried out to me, I'm going to stop you. Hallelujah. What are you going to do? I'm going to send in the west wind. I'm going to send him in a, a wind of blessing. I'm going to bless this man because he fell down on his knees and he cried out to me and he repented and he called upon my name and I heard him when he was in his time of distress. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the east wind may have come and chastised and stripped, but God sends the west wind of revival. God sends the west wind of blessings. There's a time in people's life because they fall down and repent and things start happening. Praise God. You can always tell when people are living repented lives in the church. God is blessing them. God is blessing them. Satan and things in life found a way to ensnare them and trap them. But they fell upon their face. God, I learned. God, I'm sorry. God, forgive me. And God starts sending in the west wind. Uh, and starts sending in blessings. Uh, and pretty soon you can see the glory of God manifested in their lives. Hallelujah. Because these winds, they're going to beat on your house. They ain't going to come and puff around, don't they? are going to beat on you. They're going to check you out. They're going to check your structure out. See if, see, you know, it's one thing to get up. I, I, I'm scared of people get up and say, hey, ain't nothing going to make me backslide. Hallelujah. I don't walk around and say, they ain't nothing going to make me backslide. I'll tell you what, I don't think about it either. Hallelujah. I'll never think about backsliding. I, I, I'm like Peter. I said, Lord, backslide? To what? What's there to go back to? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing to go back to. I don't see anything back here to go back to. Only way I see is onward and upward. Hallelujah. Praise God. Onward and upward. Onward and upward. Onward and upward. Praise God. There ain't nothing to go back to. Hey, my wife has failed me and my friends have failed me and my preacher friends have failed me and my relatives have failed me and, and just, I even failed me. Hello? Have you ever failed you? God, hallelujah. Praise God. And I'll tell you one thing, get down on my knees and get repent and get to talking to God. My God, he got he got time to leave in here this morning. I didn't want to leave. Let's go and get out of here. That whole school bunch will be coming in here. Hallelujah. And when they come in, it's all over with anyhow. Praise God. Amen. Not because they're a bunch of devils. They're a bunch of little children. Hee hee ha ha. They just come like going to school. Praise God. Hallelujah. The only one that thinks they're little devils is mama. That's if you don't say nothing and stay out of the way. You say anything and get in the way, she'll let you know them's little angels. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then there's another wind coming. This wind is a marvelous wind. It's marvelous what this wind can do to your life. Praise God. But in the book of Job, 37 chapter, Job begins to talk about this wind. And there's something about this wind that is going to be hard for me to preach about. Because as long as I stay down here in the chicken coop and talk about some carnal natural things, it's real easy to attach to and catch on to. But this wind comes from a long ways. Praise God. This wind is called the north. And it said here in the 21st verse, And now men see not the right light, which is in the clouds. But the wind passes and cleanses them. Mm -hmm. There's a place after repentance. There's a place even after blessings of getting in a place with God. A lot of folk look around in the fall and said, oh, can't stand but All the leaves are going to get here. It's going to get caught. But this wind comes out. If it wasn't for this wind, wouldn't have been the chatter that was going on outside of our screen door last night. I always have so Because there's something about this wind that brings purpose. There's something about this wind that gets rid of a bunch of foolish. Just hang on. This wind comes out of clouds. Hallelujah. This wind ain't going to blow in your life unless you get past Acts 2 38. This wind won't won't never get very far in your life when you come to church a quarter after seven and pray till twenty after seven. It takes hot tears rolling down your cheeks 
It takes being staggered in your finite mind, carnal thinking, and say, my God, hallelujah, because it says, fair weather cometh out of the north with God's terror. Man, just touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent power and judgment, plenty of justice. Going into the throne, finding his grace, finding his mercy, finding his majesty, finding his power, finding him in such a way I couldn't see like this till I got here. And then all of a sudden, the things in life that seem so important begin to blow off of these limbs of mine. And I begin to lose them. I begin to lose a lot of foolage. Begin to lose a lot of dead stuff that just really wasn't, really wasn't helping anyhow. It was just hanging on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, Lord. I picked up my Bible, opened up to the book of Ezekiel, and I started reading. I said, oh, Lord, they'll never understand this, even if I preach on Ezekiel 1 and 4, he said, I looked, and behold, a whirlwind come out of the north. Praise God. A wind, mighty wind come out of the north. Praise God. He said, uh, <laughs> he said it was a great cloud. Fire unfolding itself. Brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, the color of amber, and out of the midst of the fire. Woo, the glory of God. Out of the midst of the fire. Do you know where God dwells at? <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. He said, I remember Satan when you dwelt in the midst of the stones of fire, when you was around the glory throne of God. Hallelujah. And you was brighter than the noonday sun. Ezekiel says, my God, he said, this wind's coming out of the north and it's brighter than the noonday sun. It's in the stones of fire where God abides at. And all of a sudden, he began to see faces. One of them had the face of a man. One of them had the face of a lion. You ain't ready for this. One of them had the face of a ox. One of them had the face of a knee. And he said, there's a wheel. And there's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. There's something driving it. There's power in the middle of that wheel. And the whole wheel was full of eyes. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. And the wheel spins at a thousand miles an hour. And the whole wheel is full of his eyes. It don't make no difference if you're in the jungle of Africa. His eyes are there. Don't make no difference if you're in the masses down in New York City. His eyes is there. Makes no difference if you're out in the country, far out from anybody, anywhere in the hills of Montana you are. His eyes are there. And he said, he saw this wind coming in this creature that had four faces. And, and I preached it to the whole district and they said my god brother ought to preach on that some more and i preach it to this church all the time and y'all don't even know what's but it said that it had four faces and they all went straight forward yes sir because sometimes that north wind comes to you in the face of a man like right now and sometimes that north wind comes to you in the face of an ox that's plowing plowing revival plowing holiness plowing sin out of the camp oh hallelujah praise god sometimes that face comes to you like an eagle preaching face, soaring higher than any clouds you ever seen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Climbing higher and higher. Getting out of the chicken coop. Woo! Getting high in the spirit of God. Where God's holiness wraps all around me. His revelation. I almost preached a little bit tonight on revelation. I think I'm going to preach pretty soon on what revelation will do and what study will do. Hallelujah. Some folk get all wrapped up in study and study's good. But let me tell you something. Revelation just goes so far above study, it's unreal. But to get into revelation, you got to do more than just come to church. Pay your tithes. You got to get wrapped around and all. Woo! Get somewheres in God. You don't want to turn loose. You don't want prayer meeting to stop. Praise God. You want prayer meeting to keep on going. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't want worship to slow down. You just want to keep on. You don't, you don't want the altar service to quit. You want the altar service to keep right on going. Praise God. Praise God. The north wind, hallelujah, is a wind of renewal. Because you see, unless the north wind strips you down, there ain't going to be no fruit coming. Unless the north wind comes, you won't even enjoy the south wind. When it comes, for the seed bring forth new life. Hallelujah. Some folk want the south wind, but the south wind is a great wind at times. The south wind all the time will kill as much as it'll give life. Praise God. But that north wind is a beautiful wind. It'll strip you down of your glory, and it'll fill you up with his hallelujah. Hallelujah. People come up to you and touch you and say, 
I know been somewhere with God. Hallelujah. And the only reason why they know you've been somewhere with God is because you don't care about being like you used to be anymore. God, if you gotta strip me down, strip me down, do something, but I gotta have a new life, Lord. I gotta have a new beginning. Some folk don't wanna be stripped down. They just wanna be blessed. They just want the west wind. They can't stand that north wind at all. Oh, I hate the north wind. The north wind is cold, and the north wind just makes my bones ache, and the north wind just, oh, they just carry on about the north wind. That north wind makes a dark night so beautiful and clear. Stars twinkle and cold. The smoke goes straight up. Everything that don't need to be is gone. Night comes clear crystal. Not only does the night come clear and crystal, all of a sudden the night's open. The night's beautiful. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's what Job knew a little bit about. I want to show something here. In Job, the first chapter, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. That man was perfect. Another. I have known of more Bible scholars. Been to Bible school, hadn't been to Bible school. Just were preachers, just were silly people, just were this and that and the other. Who have always argued with this verse. They were just as bad as Elihu. It was just as bad as Philadad. They were just as bad as Job's wife. They were just as bad as so far. They all argued with this verse too. But this Bible said that Job was a perfect and upright man and one that feared God and he got away from the devil. He wouldn't even think about wicked things and sit around wicked things, stay in wicked places, talk to wicked people. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters and all this stuff. He was a rich man. And to make it a short story for you, he lost it all. Fire fell out of heaven, burned some up, killed him. Wind came and destroyed some more. Don't make much difference how you go after it. He lost all. Praise God. And it's amazing thing that chapter one starts with verse two. He was a perfect and an upright man. And ended in verse 22 in all this. Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. But the whole rest of the book of Job is finding out what Job did. I had a woman that I pastored in this church for a long time. If you'd see her right now, she still she still comes to some of our meetings and things. She'll tell you this guy did something wrong for all that to happen to him. She'd argue with me till the whole world looked level that this guy had to do something wrong. She was as bad as any one of those people I mentioned, including Job's wife. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is the inspired word of God. And the Bible said that Job was perfect. And I rather doubt that God could say that about me tonight. But most of the book of Job is written with his what's wrong. All that was wrong with this man was as he went to a red hot prayer. The Bible said that the sons of God, which was Job, if you please, came to play before the Lord. That's to pray. That's to worship God. Anytime you come to play before the Lord, according to the Bible, is to worship, to dance, to sing, to praise, to glorify, to lift him up before the Lord. And said the sons of God came to play before the Lord. And the devil come too. I want to tell you something. The devil's going to come to your worship meeting. And the devil's going to come to your prayer meeting. And the devil's going to come anytime you want to come before the Lord. And play before the Lord. The devil's going to come. And he said, hey, he said, I sure like to get to one of them down there. And God just helped the devil out a little bit. Because he happened to know the toughest one of the bunch. He said, hey. Have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, yeah. I said, I get him, but you got a hedge around him. I wonder if you got a hedge around you. Some of you done went to sleep on me. You got a hedge around you? I don't mind telling you I like God putting a hedge around me. Go ahead and put a hedge around me. Fine with me, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And God said, well, I'll just take down. I'm going to tell you one thing, boy. You can do anything you want to him, but you can't take his life. That belongs to me. And the devil, he was patting himself on the chest, and he was saying, well, ain't no problem at all. When I get through with him, he'll be glad to cuss you out. I'll tell you all. Oh, that old north wind going to do a little strip around here now. Praise God. So I'll tell you what. It's real easy to get to some folks. All you got to do is take what they own. If you take what they own, they'll quit serving you. The devil done pulled that on me one time, but it didn't work. I'll take all these guys. Take the whole world, but I want you to leave me one thing. That's Jesus. Take it all, but leave me Jesus. Praise God. 
take everything. I know where I'm coming from. I lost it all. In 25 minutes, it was gone in fire and smoke. Woo. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Clothes and all. Good shoes and good suits. Good ties and good shirts. They was all gone in a few minutes. Hallelujah. Amen. Couldn't even blow your nose on a handkerchief and choke you to death. Hallelujah. It was gone. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo. Said so just, I just go get everything he owns. That'll, that'll do it. That'll get him. You know, that's where a lot of folk live at tonight. That's where they live at. God just let the devil take everything. They said, well, I ain't living for God no more. When I went to, when I didn't go to church, it wasn't this bad. Woo! God have mercy tonight. Don't you wish we was back to whatever we was doing last night? Mm, praise God. But I'm going to tell you, sir, it didn't work. And the devil said, well, I know then. I'll get him. I'll get him good this time. I get the thing he loves the most, the thing he's the closest to. And the devil got in her, and she went squirting out there in front of him and said, you jerk, you, why don't you just curse God and die? Why don't you go ahead and die? You're, you're the sorriest looking thing. Look what all's happened. Uh, if you die, I could get married to something young, good looking, rich, got money, still got money in the bank. Mm. Job said, look, woman, whatever you want to do is fine. But he said, don't be trying to mess with me. Because he said, you're a foolish woman. Me curse God and die? No way. Such a thing. He ain't never done me wrong. He never has done one thing bad to me. God ain't done nothing bad to me. Maybe you curse God and die, but not me, woman. You're a foolish woman. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. You talk about the blues. A lot of you folks don't know what the blues is. If you woke up in the morning and your wife was telling you to curse God and die and you, you'd been sleeping in a blanket last night because somebody loaned it to you. That's all you had to sleep in. Mm -hmm. And then Job's friends come. Friends. I've always said with most of my friends, I don't need any enemies. And the devil said, I know how to get to Job, and I'll get to him good. And God said, how's that? He said, skin for skin, he'll curse you to your face. And God said, you can do anything you want to, Job, but you can't have his life. Satan said, fine, but he went down there and he touched him, and boils started popping out on Job. So Job was sitting over there with a piece of the old woman's broken dish, just scraping them out, scraping them out. Woo, but you say, he say, boy, I bet he's ready to give up now. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. You ain't got no idea what he's fixing to say. You ain't got no idea what's fixing to come out of his mouth. Scraping these things out of him. He said, though these skin worms devour me, yet shall I see him in my flesh. He's me up. But that south wind's going to blow. Mm. Hallelujah. Here he is, scrape, scraping them boils. I hope all of you got your scriptures I gave you and got them ready. Hallelujah. He's sitting here scraping them boils, and here's his friends come, and you talk about a mess. You know, a lot of you folks don't know what it's like to be a preacher. <laughs> Some of you wanting to be a preacher. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I ever heard of in my life. All you ever see is a guy up here preaching. You don't ever see the preacher over there in the hospital looking at something ate up with cancer. Answer, fixing to die with eyes fastened upon you. Help me, help me. And you got to say something and do something. And when these guys get there, Job is in such horrible condition. They're totally shocked. The first day, they just sit there and look at him. They don't say nothing to Job. If they said anything, it was to somebody else. Because the Bible said they didn't speak to Job. Say, my God, he's in worse shape than I thought he was. Oh, look at him. You know, it's the funniest thing how folks say the Lord told oh, God told me this. You ought to read the book of Job and see what Elah has said God told me. Elah had it worse than all of it. And he said God told me. Job 33 and 9, who did I give that to? Listen to this. You know what's wrong with you, Job? Finally, when old Elihu began to talk to Job, he said, what's wrong with you, Job, is you're a hypocrite. Because I've heard you say I'm clean without transgression. And I heard you say I'm innocent. And he said, I heard you say there wasn't no sin in you. And you can tell by looking at you, you lied about it all. You're a hypocrite. That's why you're this mess. Job, let me tell you something, Job. I love you, Job. I want to tell you something, Job. I'm telling you this as nice as I know how, because I'm your friend. But if you wasn't such a hypocrite about it, this, you wouldn't be in this kind of shit. Praise God. Job 22 and 5. God I told you to have him ready. I don't even know who I gave it to now. Oh, wait a minute. This is Elias. And he's telling old Job, what's wrong with you, Job? Well, you're quite a sinner. 
Read. Oh, yeah. You know, you act like you're righteous, but you're a sinner, and you're real living about it, you know? If you'd repent, well, this is Joe's friends. I'm going to be down with my friends the next few days. I can't hardly wait till Saturday comes to get away from it. Read, Brother Grub. Yeah? You know what's wrong with you, Joe? He's a sinner. You took the poor. You was a rich man. You just took advantage of people. You ain't not a sinner. That's why you're in such I just love for folks to console me when I'm down. You know, it's the strangest thing that everybody knows what your answer is. But you, and if you're so dumb that you listen, boy, you're in for a real heartache. Job 18 and 8, Bill of that, sits there with his mouth shut for seven days, eight days. Finally, he decides to start speaking behind Zophar. What's Bilidad got good to tell Job? Chapter 18 and 8. Oh, you know what's wrong with you, Job? The reason you're in this kind of shape is you got caught in your own snare. This trap you set for everybody else got caught up with you. Read, brother. Yeah. Read. Yeah. Woo. Terrible thing's gonna happen to you, Job. Look what you set this trap up for everybody else and you got caught in it. Chapter 1, verse 2. He was a perfect and an upright man. Now, you know something, folks? I don't think some of you are catching on what's going on in here, but there's one thing I know. When people start accusing me of things, I just love for them to accuse me, really. <laughs> I say to myself inside, look at this guessing game going on. <laughs> they know what's wrong with me, and they don't know nothing. You know what's wonderful when you're sane and full of the Holy Ghost? Is you know what you did wrong, and you know what you didn't do wrong. And old Job knew what he did wrong and what he hadn't done wrong. Old Zophar, now he's the first one to see, boy. He gets right on it. Chapter 20, verse 11. Hallelujah. Oh, look at, look at all them worms crawling out of you. What's wrong with you is your bones are full of sin. And you know what? These sinful bones are going to take you to the grave, boy. You're going to die. You're going to die in these sins. These sinful bones are going to take you to your grave. This is Job's friend. Folk come to my study all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Elder, there's my friend. Let's look at him grin and say they are. That's why it hurts so bad. <laughs> They're my friend. I found a friend. Don't never do me wrong. I got a friend I can always to depend on. Mmm, I got a friend, walks hand in hand with me. I'll tell you what gets me excited about all this, is they're sitting there lying on Job like a dog. And if you sit there and read this Bible, half of them are sitting in there saying, God told me this. Yeah, I speak in the Spirit. Woo! I'm going to tell you something in this church. You better find out when somebody's speaking in the Spirit, what kind of spirit they're in. And everything that said God told me, God didn't tell them nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's about time some of you get spiritual enough. You don't get so beside yourself when somebody said God said to me. If it's coming out of this pulpit, you better listen to it. But if it's coming out of that pew, you better check it out and check it out and check it out. I'll tell you one wonderful thing about this that gets me so excited, hallelujah, is all of this stuff is a happening to Job. But in chapter 14 and verse 14, he says, if a man die, shall he live again? Ha! These worms might take me to the dust, but I'm going to tell you something so far. Ha! I'm coming out of this grave. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God! My Lord! What are you talking about, Job? Summertime's coming. South wind's gonna blow. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise God. Listen to this. And he said, All the days of my appointed time, I don't care if I've got you sorry people in front of me accusing me of everything that I ain't never done, and I don't care if I got this sorry wife that says to curse God and die, I don't care if these skin worms eat me every day. All the days of my point of time, I'm going to wait till my change comes. What are you saying, Job? Summertime's coming. I'm putting on new robes. Hallelujah. I'm getting out of here. I'm putting on a brand new garment. Yeah. Hallelujah. Summertime's coming. Mm -hmm. I want you to know, praise God, that when the south wind begins to blow, something new gonna spring forth. Something that died out gonna live again. 
fact is, something better is coming. All them sons and daughters that Job had were a sorry lot. They wouldn't live for God. They was like Noah's sons and daughters. I believe God gave him a new bunch of sons and daughters. Hallelujah. They was good Christian sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lived for God and loved his God. Hallelujah. Wanted God to be powerful in their life just like he was powerful in their daddy's life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you listen to Job. I want to tell you the end of this story is that the south wind is blowing. And the south wind causes that which died to come forth in better than it was. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Tamanite, My wrath is kindled against you and against thy two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job has. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept lest I deal with you after your folly in that you have not spoken of me the things which is right like my servant Job so Eliphaz the Timai and Bilidad the Shuhai and Zophar the Namanite went and did according as the Lord commanded them and the Lord also accepted Job and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and he said when you pray say forgive us this day uh, he said for us to forgive as we have been forgiven. Job knew the ways of the Lord. And when Job prayed for him, the Lord turned his captivity. And then came there unto him all his Oh, Job, baby. we knew you were saved all the time. Oh, you're wonderful. So full of What's wrong, Job? It sure is good if you'll stop. Praise God. And then came there unto him all his brothers and sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. And did he bread him in his house? And they bemoaned him and comforted him. My God, he don't need all that stuff now. Wow. And they gave him money. They gave him gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For instead of having seven sons, he had fourteen thousand sheep, six thousand, count thousand, yoke, lost thousand, she had. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of them all. And in all the land, no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job. So on on, Job, Lord, he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Good old south winds blowing again. Good feel warm and be, be restored. Praise God. These winds are going to be on us. I look at this congregation over tonight. And in this congregation tonight, east wind blowing. And in this congregation tonight, west wind blowing. And in a rare few places tonight, don't praise God. The sun. Times are life. Times new growth. But these winds just keep beating on your house. Some being revival this week, while others are chastened by the Lord. At the same time, some being blessed by the Lord, while others the Lord is struck down. Praise God. Because these winds, they just keep beating on us. And they just keep beating on us until they get that house. So cute, Lord, makes a never last place. Cause they did the word when the.